All right, so welcome to Unit 4 of the program assignment for CS1101 for Python. Now, recursion is a difficult topic to understand. It, it gives myself mental headaches just trying to figure out how recursion works. So welcome to week 4, which is a challenging aspect in and of itself. So let me just put that out there. Recursion is not easy for beginners to understand but I'm going to do my best to try to explain it to you. So I went ahead and just saved some time because we were told that we should use the is divisible function from the Think Python textbook so I've included that already from line one and we know we need to create an is power function that takes two arguments and that's on line five. Now remember for you to understand this program you need to know that how the is divisible function works is that it's comparing a modulus b that means is a divisible by 3? Um, yes, it is. Does it leave a remainder 0? If it leaves a remainder 0, then it'll be true. That means it goes in without any decimal point because 3 goes into 27 an even number of times. It goes into 27 9 times. So that's true. It would be equal to 0 because there's no remainder. That's what modulus checks for. Modulus gives you the remainder after division. In this case here, 15 modulus 7 is false. It's not equal to 0. It's going to give you 1. The modulus for um, 15, uh, if I was to do it real quick here and show you, um, let me just um, get this out of the way, just so we understand how modulus works. So if I print uh, 15 modulus 7, uh, let me just um, comment out this code here. All right, let me go ahead and do this, run that. So you see it gives one because uh, 15 goes into, uh, 7 goes into 15 two times and leaves a remainder one, okay? Uh, if I was to show you what um, modulus 27.3 uh, does, you'll see it gives zero because there's no remainder left after division. So I just wanted to make sure that this is clear for everybody. All right, so it leaves a remainder zero and that's why it would be true for the statements that we had before let me go here. And that's why we're expecting this, um, these arguments to be evaluated um, to true. So we're expecting true here. Well, that's when the program is complete, when everything is all done, right? For this one, we'd be expecting false. This is not 10 and 2. Uh, that's not a, uh, 10 is not a power of 2. Uh, false expected here. All right, but we're not done with the program yet, so we have a wait, while to go before we figure out um, what's what's happening there. All right, uh, it's complaining because um, we have something. Um, it's expecting the function to be completed here. So the first thing we need to understand is that we were expected to test to see if the numbers are equal. We need to have a condition to see if the numbers are equal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this if statement there. So if they're equal, then it means that we want to return a truthful condition, a true Boolean um, value for that. Why do we want to return a true Boolean value? Because uh, if the number is equal to each other, it's automatically going to be divisible um, when we call the is divisible function. Okay, so we're, we're doing all these checks before as the program um, asks us to. If we um, look at the requirements. We see here that we must include code for the bit uh, to check if the two arguments are equal. Uh, we also need to check to see if the second argument is is one. All right. Now I'm doing these first because you'll find that you need that for the program to actually give you the correct result. I won't go into too much details of that right now. As I said, recursion is difficult to understand, and I just wanted to get you a basic understanding of how this works. So let me go back to the code and uh, let's, okay, no, that's the textbook, sorry. All right, here we go. So we have, uh, we have tested if it's, um, if it's equal, if the number is equal. So that's a test case if the number is equal. Now we need to check to see if the second upper um, the second parameter is equal to 1 because uh, remember um, 
if, if it's equal to 1, we can't have a power of that number. All right, so is equal to 1. Then we're going to return false. Why are we returning false? Because it means that it, it would not be counted as being um, divisible um, for the purpose of our function. Now, any number can be divided by 1, but it can't be a power. So if we had 1 here, um, let me... Let me um, uh, the, the function isn't completed now, All right? But let me just go ahead and show you something here. So um, print um, no. If we're saying, for example, um, 27, we're asking if 27, um, if one, one can, one can never be a power of anything but itself. So you'll never have one, um, uh, for example, you never have a scenario like this. You'll never have one multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1, giving you anything, it's always going to be equal to 1. It can never give you any number besides itself. So if it tests 1, so we do not want this. Because 1 can never be a power that will give you another number. Alright, hope that makes sense. Let me get rid of that. And that's the reason why we're asked to check to see if the second um, parameter is equal to 1. Then it just makes sense that we can't work with that, so we have to return false. Now we can finally call our if our is um, divisible function. So we want to check to see if it is divisible. All right, remember what this is returning is true or false. The is divisible function is returning true or false. So if it is not, what this returns, it's the way of logic. It's the way of of thinking out the logic. Okay. Um, before I do anything else, let me let me just um, put the return statement here. Return. If it's not, then you would return false. Otherwise, it would just remember the if statements. You ignore the branch if the con if this condition is not true. Okay. Um, then we need to call the function needs to call itself, as the question says. It's a recursive function. The function must call itself. All right. So uh, look at I have highlighted um, part four. Does the is power function call itself recursively? This is extremely important, right? That we have that there. Um, so let's um, complete this. So, so if all of, if all the other checks um, are done and it works out the way we expect it to, then we can now call the function. To we're now asking the function to call itself. That's what recursion means. Now. Um, the important thing about this step right here is that we have to make sure that this function does not loop infinitely. Right now, it's going to loop infinitely. If I were to run this program, you see it says maximum recursion depth exceeded because it will never end. Because, for example, let's say we had um, the number, let me put a comment here. Let's say we, we passed 27 and 3. It would keep passing 27 and 3, then it would go up and say, here and say, if a is equal to b, it would check that, it would check this, it would come here, it would call it again. It would These numbers would never change. So it would always be doing this recursion over and over infinitely. There would be no end to it. But Python is going to stop that. It's not going to allow the program to run forever. So we have to make sure that the, that the first parameter keeps getting checked to see if it's a power by dividing it. Remember, we divide a number constantly to see if it's a power, that's how we test the power. So uh, we divide um, 27 by 3, and that will give. Well, I did it. I did. I did explain it up at the top before. So actually, forgot about that part. Right. Um, so this here, this comment here, we need it here. All right. How you check to see that a number is a power of another number is that it can keep you can keep dividing that number until you get one because eventually three divided by three gives one. So we start by saying um, 27 divided by three that gives nine, then nine divided by three that gives three, then three divided by three gives one, and that's when we stop, right? Because that's when you know this would no longer be true. So you check a power by constantly dividing that number, and the number we divide by is the B part, the B parameter, okay? This is the A parameter, and this is the B parameter. So how do we work this out now? What we do here 
is we make sure that we do the division every time the function is called is calling itself so this is this is how we do it we have to take this parameter here right to keep dividing by to, by keep dividing the number a the option a parameter into like we did here 27 divided by 3 9 divided by 3 let me just highlight this as I go along we, we did this we did this and we did this until we get to 1 so we have to do that here or the function will never end now if we run the function now we see we get our, our function ending it's not an infinite loop so if we don't divide this to keep reducing the number by the B part by the B parameter we're going to get maximum recursion depth depth okay so I'm going to put it back there and you might want to just take a minute to just look at it and just see that you understand the logic how it works but I've explained it to you right here this is actually what's happening all right this comment here is explaining to you what is happening let me put it below here it's a comment so it doesn't matter where I put it really um, for this case so for the values 27 comma 3 this is what happens okay now the question asks us to do a certain number of tests that um, are there and you're gonna you're gonna finish that rest of the part of the code um, to make sure that it prints um, what was asked okay so you have these examples here um, the, oh, this actually should be 27 and 3 I actually changed this to play around with something here so we'll need to actually do this um, in our code uh, which we're gonna do now all right let me let me comment this out because I might have it repeating so let me comment that out okay so oh, it's not it shouldn't be indented so that's why it's complaining Python is sensitive to indent so you don't indent something unless it's supposed to be a code block in an if or function uh, function definition oh, this gonna all the way up here should be down here all right great so let me run this now all right so you can see there as we saw before 27 um, uh, 27 3 arg the tw arguments 27 3 returns false 10 to uh, returns true sorry 10 comma 2 returns false and all the others we expect them to uh, 1 comma 1 would return true true because 1 is a power of 1 all right um, 10 comma 1 returns false because 1 cannot be the power that gives you another number all right um, 3 can return true because 3 to the power of 1 returns um, is up is it returns 3 so remember the code says that any number to the power of 1 is um, a power of itself it's math you do have to understand a bit of math for this to be easier for you but I hope this explanation helps you to better grasp this topic uh, please watch the video again if you need to pause it if you need to and type the code uh, if you need to okay recursion is not easy to understand so I encourage you to watch the video maybe two times maybe three times and pause it and type your code all right best of luck with this program